Greetings, hacksters. Today, I want to share with you a new exciting thing that you can do with Arduino and artificial intelligence slash machine learning. Um, this is my robot companion, uh, Archimedes, and he usually is moving around, but it's pretty loud, so I've turned him off. Uh, but my goal is to make his movements respond to me uh, speaking certain phrases at him. And it turns out that that just got lots easier um, through Edge Impulse. And let's take a look at what that actually means. So uh, just announced, Edge Impulse brings TinyML to millions of Arduino developers. It's a collaboration between Edge Impulse, uh, led by Jack Shelby and, or <laughs> Zach Shelby and Jan Jungboom, and uh, Arduino. So this is using the Nano, Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense, which is a mouthful, <laughs> but it has a ton of features to go along with that long name. Uh, you can see that it's got a microphone built in, all kinds of cool sensors. Um, it's got a little programmable RGB LED. I think it's a, it's got microphones. I think I mentioned that already. <laughs> and light level sensors and things like that. Go check out the page for the Nano if you want to learn more about that one. You can just click on this link here. And the article I'm looking at is the first link in the description to this video. As usual, they're all below here. So it's $31 and you get so many cool sensors here. Let's see, we've got a ton of analog input and output. Microphone IMU, so you've got uh, how many axes here? Nine axes. Uh, accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer. You've got a microphone for not only sound levels, like with some of the other ones that we've featured, like the Circuit Playground Express, but you can actually sense what uh, it can t tell what people are saying, uh, what those sounds are, not just their volume. Uh, gesture light and proximity sensing, barometric pressure, temperature and humidity, and um, <laughs> of course it also has length, width, and height. Amazing. Uh, so anyway, this little board is sort of designed for running machine learning, and there have been a number of recent projects around bringing that to the Arduino. This one is called TinyML. There is an introduction to it that we've linked down below. I think it's Yan Yongboom telling us all about it. Uh, our friend Neil Tan has worked on it extensively, and you can check out the Getting Started with TinyML webinar from April of this year if you want to learn more about TinyML and Edge Impulse. I've also done an interview recently with Jack, Zach Shelby about uh, not only what the deal is with the Edge Impulse, but also how to go through the actual process of using it, which is not loading right now. <laughs> it's fine, though. Uh, you can find out more at edgeimpulse.com. What I've been doing today is trying to uh, get up and running with TinyML on the Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense because, let me show you, under the hood here, not that there is a hood, um, there's a bandana. Under the bandana here, we have a couple of Arduinos. Check it out. Is the plural Arduini? I think it is. So we've got an Arduino Uno down here, and that's controlling Archimedes' servos, which allow him to move around. But on top of that, rubber banded in place, is an Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense. It's been that way since last year at Maker Fair when I was trying to make his servos move. And um, now finally, there's a chance to integrate him with art artificial intelligence basically for free. Um, unfortunately, the Nano 33 BLE Sense does not yet support the servo library, or didn't when I last checked, so that's kind of a drawback. That's why it's stacked on top of the Uno there. Uh, but so yeah, today's project is getting uh, Archimedes to recognize different phrases of speech. Um, there are really good tutorials for doing this on the Edge Impulse website. You can check out how to do it with the SC Nucleo kit, how to do it with this Arduino, with the Edit Compute module. That's kind of cool looking, actually. You got Arduino headers, what looks like Raspberry Pi headers as well. Is that a lie? Could be a lie. Um, Another looks like you could stick a Teensy or a Nano there or something. Uh, you've got mobile phone directions, and we'll get to that later. And then you can also follow the porting guide to port it to new platforms. So I've been following this Nano 33 BLE Sense tutorial. And it takes you all the way from installing a firmware on the Arduino, installing the Arduino CLI, the command line interface, 
uh, and how to go, where to go from there. There's also one for the mobile phone. So I've been running into a couple of troubles that I'm documenting along the way. My thing is that I am a hardware person at heart. And while that overlaps with being a software person, to me, electrons make more sense than code. And so mashing things together in a complex development environment is pretty hard for me. As a result, I think I'm uniquely positioned to give you a tutorial on all the stuff that if a software developer reads the instructions, they know how to do and like where to run each command. And it's kind of implied, but for me, I have to figure that stuff out each time. So I'm writing up my own tutorial linked in the description again. It's not published yet because it's not finished um, on how to do that as someone who isn't a really experienced software developer. Um, oh, hey, Jay. Uh, Jay says, will Archimedes understand all languages? Well. I mean, I'd have to program each phrase in each language, I guess. So probably not for a while, but I think it'd be cool. You know, people could submit their own samples actually and their own models. And then we could sort of crowdsource this companion bot uh, voice recognition model that everyone could use. Wouldn't that be sweet? Uh, it might be too large to run on a Nano 33 BLE sense, but maybe you could hook up your robot to your phone anyway. Uh, so I'm making this tutorial for everyone who doesn't already know all that intuitive background stuff about um, software. So I was trying to get it running on the Arduino. I was running into an error that I haven't yet been able to find a re uh, resolution for on Google. And so right now what I've been doing is practicing using Edge Impulse and training a model using my iPhone. And that's been really smooth and a kind of an awesome process. So it generates and oh, I should probably no, that's okay. Uh, it generates a QR code, not this, obviously, that's just an example um, that you can scan with your phone, which enables the browser based um, edge impulse environment to pull data from your phone. Uh, you have to allow it in your device, of course. But after that, you're able to use either the accelerometer or the microphone, possibly even both, to sample data from this uh, and train models based on that. Using like create sample sets based on like using the same phrase over, like "Hi, Archie," <laughs> annoying your housemates in the process, or "Good night, Archie." Uh, and then generate samples of your voice saying that so that you can train a model to recognize them. Uh, and I'm going to be putting up some videos of that, but I can show you maybe really quick what it looks like. I've got this pulled up in the browser, data collection connected to uh, Edge Impulse. And then if I go to the environment that I'm working in, uh, I think I can go and acquire more data. You can see that I've uh, recorded samples for noise, good night, Archie, how are you, and hey, Archie. So those are the sort of four things. Noise is obviously for background noise, uh, and those are the phrases that I'm trying to recognize. So I'm going to make another hey, Archie one. I label it so that it knows which type of um, phrase I'm recording. I'm going to sample for 10 seconds at 16 kilohertz, which is a pretty decent sort of low res audio rate, capture rate, but it'll do for this. So I hit start sampling. Let me see if I can show you both of these at once. <laughs> start sampling, waiting, it says it's, oh, I have to allow it, give access to the microphone again. Okay, there we go, starting in two seconds, and now it should be recording. Hey, Archie. Hey, Archie. Hey, Archie. Hey, Archie. And what I think I need to do actually is leave more space between those because of some fiddly stuff with it. But you can see that it's recorded <laughs> a little bit of me talking at the start as well. So I should probably delete this one. But if you look at other instances, you can see uh, in the interface here, all those little iterations of me saying the phrase. So this new one, I'm actually going to delete, but you can, 
record other ones and move them to the test data. So training data is used to generate your model and then test data is used to test the model because if you overfit it to your training data, then the model will only recognize the exact examples that you've given it. Uh, so you need to have a large variety of samples and you need to use test data that's separate from that training data in order to make sure that it can actually recognize samples from the real world. We've got some comments coming up here. Um, <laughs> Jay says he could be like a real C-3PO. Yeah, a translation droid. That'd be pretty cool. Protocol droid translation. He's like a diplomatic droid. Anyway, <laughs> Archie is not going to activate attack mode. He will not have attack mode. I refuse. Um, David asks, what was the error? So the error that I ran into is in this, um, this log that I'm keeping and it was uh, failed to set up serial daemon error invalid JWT token cannot re retrieve projects undefined. And I wasn't able to resolve that on my own. I feel like that's a software thing and probably someone here could actually help me with it. But also in the meantime, I was like, maybe if it can't retrieve projects, maybe that's because they're undefined, maybe because I don't have any projects yet. So if I use the phone to generate a project, maybe I'll then be able to load that model onto the uh, Arduino, even if I'm not able to get um, it up and running yet. So I'm doing it first with the phone. I could be on the whole, you know, barking up the wrong tree here, but at the same time, I'm getting some good experience with using Edge Impulse, which I think is, it's a refresher from when Zach kindly gave me a tutorial before. You can see I have these four labels. Uh, oh, and it actually tells me how much uh, data I have recorded, for examples, for each of those labels. You know what's cool about this is that they tell you that it's good to balance the amount of time you have uh, for each example so that your model has about the same amount of data to go on for each. And so I can see that I should probably get some more for good night, Archie, and how are you? <laughs> cool. Um, and then you design your impulse. Uh, so I'm using an audio uh, model type. Um, and neural network classifier, I can set over here and you can set the, this is all stuff that's in the tutorial. So I'm not gonna go through it right now, um, the official tutorial. Um, there are also, so I'm following this one for audio recognition. Uh, they have a beautiful example for recognizing sound from audio, which is exactly what I'm trying to do here. And they also have another one for uh, continuous motor, motion recognition. So if you're moving, the Arduino around, like we said, it has nine axis uh, motion detection. Uh, you'd be able to recognize different types of actions so that if, for example, you want to recognize uh, doing one type of gesture versus another one, uh, you could recognize that. If you want to recognize whether something is like moving forward or like moving in a circle constantly versus stopped or like moving back and forth rapidly, you could do that. Um, all kinds of cool examples. The one that we did with Zach was about recognizing gestures. Uh, <laughs> David says, I have been playing with Edge Impulse a bunch, but have not run into that error. We'll let you know if I do. Thanks, hooray. I would love to hear uh, anything that will help set me on the right track because I'm sure that I'm probably making some, some newbie mistakes, but that's what it's all about. That's why I love this job. <laughs> uh, so to recap, Go check out the article on Edge Impulse bringing TinyML to millions of Arduino developers through the Nano 33 BLE Sense. They've actually got some of the exam uh, the, the instructions up here already. Whoop. Check that out. Um, who wrote this actually? Yan Yongwum and Dominic Pajak. Cool. Uh, check out the Arduino Nano 33 BLE Sense. It's a really powerful device in a small form factor with uh, that only costs $30. I think it's amazing. It's actually my favorite board that I've come across for some applications since the light blue bean was discontinued and that is high praise. Uh, we've got, oh yeah, more info on the inertia. You can find that from the Arduino page. The Edge Impulse main page is linked below as well as our interview with Zach Shelby if you wanna learn more about Edge Impulse as a whole. Um, this webinar on getting started with TinyML with Edge Impulse. My tutorial, uh, the ongoing work in progress for Archimedes 2. This is actually the second iteration of my owl familiar robot um, getting back to his AI roots. And the Edge Impulse Nano uh, 33BLE Sense tutorial. 
there is, if you just click down to the mobile phone uh, page instead of the Arduino page, then you will find all the directions that I'm following to do it on my phone. Here's an example of the QR code that you scan with your phone to connect it to your browser. Um, that's also in GitHub. This tutorial for recognizing sounds from audio, another one for continuous motion recognition. They have really good documentation on this stuff. It's just that some of us need a little bit more handholding, and that's what I'm setting up for us right now <laughs> on Hackster. It's a work in progress, but it is public now, so you'll be able to see it. It's just not fe uh, pu totally published yet, because obviously there's not even a picture up here. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I hope that you will uh, enjoy playing with this as much as I do. We've got some, some sound going on here, and I feel like I've covered everything now. So I'm going to wrap up. Thanks, as always. I appreciate seeing your comments. It's lovely to hear from you as I'm as I'm broadcasting here. It's something new for us, and I welcome you talking back and sharing your own experiences. Do it now or in the comments later on. Uh, and as always, hack on. <laughs>